Pumpkin the Gentleman is a TikTok artist who has drawn serious concern and speculation in recent weeks over what would appear to be an extensive history of immoral actions and comments, leading to a video titled, This TikTok artist likes kids a little too much. But are those claims true? With a response video from him called Explanation and Taking Accountability, maybe he can spread some light on the truth and prove these claims untrue. This TikTok artist might be a predator. Let's talk about it. On the 2nd of August, creator Lewis McClung published a video about a content creator known here on out as Pumpkin the Gentleman, which for the sake of a hotline call, I will be shortening to just Pumpkin. Side note, if you'd like to be a gentleman, you should subscribe to the channel. We are on our way to 250,000 subscribers. <laughs> Damn, that was shameless. Pumpkin is a TikTok influencer with 500,000 followers who creates art memes that have on occasion hit over 7 million views. This video, while not being the original source of the information, is a good point of reference for every allegation that we'll be discussing here and would accuse him of several serious allegations. So before I touch on Pumpkin's response, I thought we should touch on those. Most of the allegations about Pumpkin revolve around his irresponsible and somewhat disturbing handling of his Twitter. So I've collected these together for the sake of a more cohesive structure. Lewis first emphasizes that Pumpkin's Twitter was, according to the allegations, marked 16 plus for most of the to be mentioned issues. In spite of that, Pumpkin would share art that would often tread into a more sexual nature the most. This could be an issue. It all started with a prompt on Twitter of people saying, hey, make this, make your OC in this. Everybody in the NSFW art community, get on this, all right, it's time. But of course, Mr. Gentle Loser, seeing himself as a bit of a connoisseur when it comes to this stuff, he said, oh, I'll hold my metaphorical beer because I'm yes. 19 going on 20. I can't drink yet, but uh, hold it as I make this. Oh man, okay, I can't show you all of it obviously, but just know that there's a bit of an erectile thing going on below, okay? And you may be thinking, Lewis, is that even a problem? I see stuff like this on Twitter all the time. Literally, literally you can't look anything up on Twitter without seeing something along those lines. You just can't. And to that I say, no, it's not a problem at all. Unless your account is set and said to be for people of the age of 16. 16, all right, let me get something clear that I don't think a lot of people understand. 16 years old is a kid, okay? I don't care what the age of consent is is in your state, in your country, I don't, I don't care. If you're an adult, do not date a kid. Is that, is that so hard? to understand, oh my god, I feel like I have to drive this point home all the time. And I'll see comments in a bunch of videos, not even just my own, saying, hey guys, hey guys, in my state, in my state, 16 is the age of consent within reason, but it's the age of consent, okay? And that makes it okay. No, I don't care. This is just my opinion. This is just my opinion. No, shut up. You're weird, okay? If you think, damn, 16-year-old? Let me get some of, uh, let me, no! But as often as Pumpkin would post borderline NSFW on his 16 plus account, he would share replies that would not look good for him. One of those being a conversation between himself and what is at the point of Lewis's video, not known to be a friend of Pumpkin's. This individual would ask to be raised by Pumpkin and in response, he would say, when you're older. Uh, somebody posted a, a thing saying, y'all, Pumpkin and his Riz, bro, it's too effective. I want to get Rizzed by the Pumpkin too. This person was 16, by the way. And he said, when you're older, heart hands. Uh, okay, yeah, you, I know you get it. And I just, but like, I, there's just so much. There's so much of it. There's so much of it. Oh my God. Bro. <laughs> Bro, I don't even want to call you that. It's too friendly. Why don't I just call you a creep? You're just a creep. You're just, uh, you're not a weirdo. You're a creep. No radio head for you. Just, just get out. Just go away, please. All right, you, you clearly can't control yourself because you think it's okay to put 16 plus in your description or whatever. Like, dude, honestly, it's not even about what you're posting, okay? It's weird, it's creepy, it's outlandish, right? But those are all just personal opinions and there's no real way, there's no real way overall to stop minors from seeing what you're doing, okay? And I can go on and on all day about how people really just shouldn't be posting most of the stuff they are on places like TikTok and Instagram, but Twitter is for adults. You do have to register as 18 years of age to use it. So people lie, people get on there, they're kids, right? but it's when you knowingly interact with people who are children and tell them, not when you're older, bro. That's grooming. Safe to say, 
this is not a good look. This next issue is a bit of a more confusing one and as it's quite an extreme one, I would like to say up front that there will be important context that will change your perspective of this allegation later in the video. One of the more serious claims discussed in regards to Pumpkin's mishandling of his Twitter was the claim that he shared an image in which you could see an outline of his genitals, captioned closest to a dick pic that you're getting. This is the least blurred photo I could find of it, but uh, you know, I'm sure you can infer what's going on. This image was posted on Gentle Loser's account when it wasn't privated yet, still 16 plus, and uh, the blurred part is a very well-defined outline of his bulge, okay? And that, that's not for 16 year olds, you 19 year old weirdo. Yeah, we're like the same age, okay? I'm 20, that's not that far off 19. A 16 year old? Bro, bro. That's not it, okay? When I was 19, right, you may be thinking, oh, that's only a three-year difference. No, 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 no. That's, that's, I've graduated high school. I am working. I have a job. I'm an adult. I pay taxes, okay? I have to think about the next electoral vote. When I was 16, I didn't care about none of that. Within this video is also a conversation between Pumpkin and an individual where they emphasize that sharing inappropriate content to his 16 plus account is not okay. And he said that it was just an anatomic body part and that, in Japan, that is considered normal for fictional characters. Okay, buddy. <laughs> but of course, somebody called him out about it and he competently responded. There's no incompetence here like he claimed. No, he is simply just gonna try and justify what he did. Like, what do you mean you thought it was appropriate that there was a chance of someone 16 seeing your bulge? Because to me, it was just an anatomy body part. In Japan, that is considered normal. <laughs> there are a lot of shows in anime where a character has a bulge or big boobs or other assets, either due to the anatomy or costume. <laughs> are you talking about H-E-N-T-A-I? Because that's not how that works, bro. That's for adults. What do you mean it's normal? No, it's not. In Japan, it's normal to censor those things. Like, literally just putting sensor bars over everything because it's not normal at all to see those things everywhere. Plastered on a bunch of billboards for the community to gaze upon. No. He would share apologies for some of these allegations, proclaiming innocence through ignorance in response to most of the inappropriate irresponsible comments he'd been a part of, and it would change his Twitter to be 18 plus. Let's start with him putting his best foot forward, because I think that's always important. Now, we start these things off with the pseudo-apology of people doing stuff you just really can't apologize for doing. I am sorry. I apologize for making and posting inappropriate content, which I then expose to a younger audience. I also apologize for being stubborn as well as ignorant to those who have tried to inform me beforehand about my actions regarding my content and age rating. I have failed to realize how much damage I have caused to my audience, and it was never my intention to bring harm to anyone. I was wrong. Moving forward, I will tone it down. Now that I am aware and have a full understanding of what 16 plus content is, in addition to that I am bumping my content viewing to 18 plus, I sincerely apologize to those I've disappointed and let down. See, all of that is great. All of that's awesome if you haven't literally tried to justify doing these things, okay? You do not get to claim ignorance or not knowing or being ignorant to what people are telling you when you literally respond competently to what they are saying to you. And then everything was fine, nothing went wrong again, and he did not find himself in any further controversy. Is what I would like to say, but yeah, of course he didn't. <laughs> he would make the mistake of letting a 17 year old follow his 18 plus only account on their request, saying, sure, why not? Here is some actual, literal, actual proof. This is the real, the real proof of him interacting with minors in very inappropriate ways. I'm 17 and turning 18 on the 23rd of August. Am I allowed? I'm working on fan art right now for you. How else would I send it? Be sure, why not? Okay, all right, buddy. Okay, all right. You're an, ad you're an adult now, all right? You're an adult now. You have to make these, you have to think about these things. You have to make these decisions, okay? Like, I get it, okay? You're 19. You're interacting with somebody who's 17 going on 18, right? That's not too bad. I still don't like it. It still makes me uncomfortable. It's still like just uh, you can't really get away with this stuff and people have to hold you accountable for it so that you don't do actual worse bad things. Lewis's video would also discuss Pumpkin's TikTok too, showing both questionable content in these TikTok videos and also comments from what is claimed to be multiple minors with inappropriate comments 
and he would respond in kind with unacceptable messages. Here are a couple comments of him interacting with minors. Like, maybe not knowingly, but he didn't bother to check. There was this picture of him, you know, scarfing on some bread with some cream coming out of it. You know, an innuendo, if you will. Here's what a minor said. I'm not gonna read it because that's weird to me. You know, you can't make me do it. I don't wanna. But then, but then the, the my, but, but then uh, he responded and said, thank you. What is wrong with you? Go to hell. Specifically loser hell, but uh, we'll save that for later. Here's somebody saying, whose bread is that exactly? A kid responds, uh, weirdly, and then he likes the comment. And it, okay, I'll address the fact that he might not know this is a minor, but uh, either way, it strikes a chord with me after knowing what I do know. So here's one more case of him that I found interacting with a minor, just to, just to throw it out there, honestly. I don't, I don't even want to read it or anything like that. It's just another, it's just another one. But again, he's, he is but an example. He is but literally just me showing you that this stuff is happening all over the place and we have to stay vigilant and diligent to see it, to call people out for it, to hold people accountable so that the groomer summer of 2024 can go down in history and not continue to be our present. Again, this next claim is one that has much more context than the response section. I do not feel okay with presenting such information without this disclaimer beforehand. There were also several DMs that were alleged to be from Pumpkin shown within Lewis's video in a conversation between Pumpkin and an unidentified 12 year old. Within this conversation, both parties share a selection of off disturbing and illegal comments. One of those being a message from Pumpkin that read, Bro, no, I will be cancelled and labeled a pedo. And another sharing that his hands were craving pity right now. Yay. He also has an alleged conversation with somebody who is definitely a minor, but the alleged part is that they are 12. Oh, God. Oh, whoa. Okay, we're jumping from 16 all the way down the ladder to literally a baby. You're but a little child, and you're not allowed to talk with them, let alone say all this bullshit. And I'm gonna read it in good faith. Thank you, Pumpkin. I weirdly want to kiss you. Raise his eyebrow. You know what you do there? And this is Lewis's crash course on how not to talk to minors. You don't say anything. You don't send any emojis. You don't do nothing. Say nothing, okay? Nothing. That's the crash course. That's it. It's over. I mean, is it allowed? Sends a kissing noise. Makes out. Okay, don't talk to people like that. Especially if they're 12. Grr, give me your censored out. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is censored out. Bro, nah, I'm gonna be canceled and labeled as a P3DO. Running away, gassed up emoji. Uh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> I hate to break it to you. You're gonna be canceled or labeled as a P3DO anyways. Right now, mind go wild. I'm gonna be honest, my hands are craving for some Berhonga gongas right now. How are they so soft and squishy and so comforting and they fit perfectly in my hand? What? And I'm sure you would try to justify this with being like, I'm hypersexual. That doesn't mean you have to text a minor. You creep. You dirty creep. Ew. Get the hell out. Go away. Go to prison or something. I don't know. Hike your ass somewhere else. Uh, and that's not it. Can't remember the rest. Teehee, banana, popsicle, cucumber, eggplant, joystick, fiddlestick, third leg, hot dog. Whose horse is that? Horny ass hell. Hypersexuality go burn. I knew that's what he was gonna do. <laughs> I knew it, I called it, I knew what I called it. Actually, I, I actually forgot and I called it cool. How are you gonna, okay, I get it. I get it, right? You have a hypersexuality disorder. I get that. That does not justify it. That is not an excuse. You have a conscience. You know that you're not allowed to talk to kids. You even said, oh, no, 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 I'm gonna get canceled. That should have been enough for you to be like, oh wait, maybe, maybe I'm right. Maybe me, the person saying this, maybe I'm right. Maybe I just stop here. Maybe I stop now. Maybe I stop before I ever sent anything to this person. Maybe I just get the hell out of here. Maybe I, maybe I shut the fuck up. Maybe, I don't know. Lewis's video would also share a plethora of theories about Pumpkin's race, weight, place of birth, sexuality, and more. I do not personally understand the reason behind this investigation with such lackluster evidence, I don't think it's worth delving further into. And he somehow thinks when he posts pictures of him gripping a plushie, you know, seductively or whatever, his hands look like this. Th those, I, I don't want to stereotype and I don't want to be too blatant, but I think anybody with common sense can realize those are not the hands of somebody with a very high body fat percentage. 
okay? Just scientifically, that doesn't add up. And the fact that he often draws his skin very dark, and also the image he said that I just showed you was from his younger brother, drew them both with darker skin, when in that image, that same image I just showed you, it seems that either he has light skin, which then, you know, whatever, or he might actually just be white. And as a white person, I'm not really allowed to be offended about somebody pretending to be black. That's not, that's not my wheelhouse, but I've seen plenty of people online mad about it, so I thought I'd bring it up. And I want to make it known that I am, every time I'm thinking about his hypersexuality, okay? And I don't want to say something crazy like he might be faking it just to get away with stuff, which is a possibility. But there is always the chance that people fake these things to make it a reality, right? And even though he claims to have or does have hypersexuality, that doesn't justify any of this crap. On the 5th of August, Pumpkin the Gentleman released a response to the allegations titled Explanation and Taking Accountability. This video is introduced with an admission to being irresponsible and immature with his platform. Whether this is an excuse or not will be determined by what he says after. Hello, this is Pumpkin the Gentleman. Um, I know a lot has been going on. I know a lot has been said. I was in fact irresponsible and immature. Although in this video, I'm going to be clearing up most of the allegations that were either taken out of context or cropped. I'm also going to be going over my own actions and wrongdoings. It's also important to note that a lot of this video is actually a retread of his past responses to these allegations over on TikTok. Those were all taken down by the platform, presumably over the subject matter. The first allegation that I'd like to discuss is in regards to his conversation on Twitter, where someone asked if he could riz them up. You know, the one where he told them when you're older. He provides further context on this and states that this was one of his 16 to 17 year old friends with him being 18 at the time. And that this was a common joke within his friend group and not in any way an actual advancement towards them. Though he does admit that it was not a smart idea to share this on a public account and that he is aware of how bad it did look and was also not aware of the fact that waiting is considered a grooming tactic. I'm going to be going over this tweet I made back in April when I was 18 towards my close mutual who was 16 to 17, a two year age gap where I said when you are older as a response to them saying they wanted to get rizzed by me. Although this was just a joke between me and my friend, it came off terribly wrong. I could have worded it better. I was not aware that this was a frequent term used by groomers or when grooming, nor was I aware that this term implies that I was waiting for them to become legal so that I could do certain things, which by no means did I intend to imply. I have never sexually interacted with this mutual. I've never sexually messaged this mutual. I never asked of anything from this mutual, let alone anything sexual. I have never expected or wanted anything sexual from this mutual or with this mutual. This is his testimony and his opinion on that situation. However, I understand how people misinterpreted that tweet, clearly understand people's reaction to that tweet. And I appreciate those who came forward and told me what was wrong with the tweet and how to better improve my wording moving forward, which shortly afterwards, I did delete the tweet. I feel like it was irresponsible to share a joke like this on a public platform, especially with someone underage, but that ultimately is not the act of a malicious actor, but an immature teenager. He continues from here to call the dick pic claim a straight up fabrication. He rebuts that the image in question was posted to his 18 plus account and had been marked to have inappropriate content on platform, but that the person who had spread a screenshot of it had obscured that information. Moving on, however, people are claiming that I posted a dick pic to a bunch of minors. That is a hypocritical lie. From the screenshot alone that this person used, it is clear that you took a post out of my NSFW labeled account with the emojis 18 or denied. Even if you look at the bottom right corner, you'd see the option hide. Hide what you may ask? Hide the flags I put up for that post. You want to know what the flag said? Author labeled this post nudity. There were warnings, there were labels, and there were flags. Yet you as a minor ignored them, took it out of my account that was specifically for an adult audience, not minors, and then reposted it to your minor fan base. And guess what your minor fan base did? They reposted it and it went across the internet. And yet you still accuse me of posting my dick pic to minors, especially given that that was my real body part. I feel incredibly violated because that picture was for a specific audience, which was adults only, minors denied. Yet you disrespected my boundaries as a minor and reposted it to other minors who then just basically showed it to the world. 
I know some will argue that, oh, well, your NSFW account is public, so of course minors will get into it. But here's the thing. My account is labeled as adult content with all posts flagged. This means that if you input your birthday and it happens to show that you are a minor, Twitter will add a specific filter called age restricted so that you cannot view adult content until you are an adult, which is 18. So in order for a minor to have access to any of my media, that would mean that they lie about their age when inputting their birth date to give them an adult age so that they'll be able to view adult content, which in that case, that is not my fault. Of course, when I noticed or am notified that a minor is following me or interacting with my NSFW content, I will immediately block. However, I will not notice and catch every single one, nor is it my duty to. If a minor lied about their age and cannot respect and abide by the rules, the warnings, and the labels that are given to them for their safety, they should not be on the internet. And that is not my job or responsibility. That is theirs. And if they cannot handle such a simple responsibility for themselves and their safety, they should not be on the internet, let alone Twitter. This would, to the surprise of no one, change the entire context of this image, and as such, it should be said that someone who would share the claim without including that to cancel him is not only making it harder to take other serious claims at face value, but also is spreading misinformation about another person by excluding context, if this is to be believed. There's only one incident which people keep on bringing up where I allowed a minor into my account. In this screenshot, which was practically last year, I was freshly 18. Yes, I started my account or started posting on it, the moment I turned 18. Due to this, in the screenshot, I was only two months older than this person who was going to turn 18 in just a few days. So I thought, okay, there's not really much of a difference. Sure. Of course, after one year of actually having an NSFW account, I now know how to manage it better. As in, yes, now I know that there are no exceptions. You're either 18 and older. If you're younger, you're out. I've been doing my part blocking minors when I see them. However, it will be extremely helpful if minors just stayed out of minor denied places. You guys can read. I know you guys ain't stupid. I know you guys can read. If it says minors denied, don't go in. Don't interact. It should also be said though, that as he'd allowed a 17 year old into this account, which he confesses to within this video, but emphasizes that he was only two months older than them and that he was a recent 18 year old himself. But again, with the concern that he could have intentionally let another minor into his followers, it could still be a problem with new evidence. What he can't so easily brush off though, was the issue with his deleted tweet stating that in Japan, indecent content was normalized for an 11 to 13 year old to consume. He tries to argue that this was not him making a defense or excuse for the explicit content that he had shared on this account and that it was rather in response to a comment made asking him why he thought it was appropriate to post illicit material on the timeline for 16 year olds to see in the first place, but just an explanation and that this comment was not meant to argue that what Japan considers acceptable is okay. I am aware of this screenshot of my deleted tweet is making its rounds around social media. Without the given context, it seems as if I'm using Japan as an excuse for my irresponsible actions. However, that is not the case. This deleted tweet was a response to a person who asked me a question, which was why did I think posting suggestive art with a bulge was okay in the first place? This question was asked to me after I deleted the overly suggestive art and moved it into my NSFW account, to which I then explained that based on how I grew up and what I saw, certain things were normalized. I then go on to explain in depth of how highly suggestive material was allowed to be consumed by younger audience from where I grew up, which was in Japan, and that because of that, I thought my content was a lot more tamed compared to that. These tweets were not me using them as an excuse to justify my actions, but rather to explain them to a user who asked me about it. The user asked me why do you think it was okay in the first place? So I explained to them my mindset, why I had that mindset, and so on. However, as shown in the screenshot, I deleted the tweet shortly after I posted it. Reason being that I realized that it doesn't matter where I grew up. It doesn't change the fact that I was irresponsible with my younger audience and that I should have not posted such highly suggested material to a younger audience, that including of a bulge. To me, what's said here does not dispute the idea that he was using it to justify or defend his decisions. 
and him ending this section saying that he deleted this tweet because he realized it did not matter where or how he grew up and that regardless his behavior was inappropriate and irresponsible defeated the point of defending this comment in the first place it should go without saying here but he deleted this tweet for a reason and intentionally or not it could be viewed as him making a defense for sharing indecent content with 16 year olds on his platform Moving on, there are these screenshots that have been shown claiming that I am liking and replying to minors' comments. I have checked both of these accounts, even this one. All three show no indication of their age or their age at all whatsoever in their bio. So I'm not sure how I was supposed to know if they were minor. I'm not even sure how you know they even were a minor and if you just assumed. However, I will say that during the time I first started this account and as my account grew popular, I do not and cannot check every single user who comments, likes, or follows my account. Though I do agree that my past behaviors were unnecessary, I did not need to respond to these flirtatious comments, nor did I need to respond in such a manner either. Yes, I agree. I was immature with how I interacted with my fans during the start of my account and throughout, which is why I am and have been working on fixing my behaviors. His response to the comments he made in response to what was claimed to be several minors in his TikTok section is also not so straightforward. While he emphatically disagrees with criticism for these comments, because the individuals in question did not have their age in bio, and as such he couldn't have known, I think it more than reckless to respond in such a manner on a platform filled with so many underage individuals like TikTok in the first place. As a creator, you should know better. And if you don't know someone's age, that doesn't give you a pass to speak in an inappropriate manner with them. You should not presume. The next of these accusations that he glazes over is the most serious, the aforementioned conversation between himself and a 12 year old. He said that beyond not remembering this conversation, he also could not find the conversation in his DMs, and believes that the screenshots have been presented in a heavily misleading way that is obscuring much of the screenshot that could have been used as a reference point to locate it on his end, from the time of these messages to their use in it. Speaking of which, there has been these screenshots going around saying that I was flirting and talking to a 12 year old. I will say that I have no memory of these conversation or screenshots or of this user. I cannot find the messages between me and this user so I can't prove or disprove anything. I do not have a reliable memory due to certain circumstances and substances. But what I do remember is that back when I first started this TikTok account, which was when I was 17, which at this time I had very, very few fans. Because of this, when a fan reached out and wanted to have a conversation with me, become friends, I agreed. So I answered most DMs. Some were casual, some were people venting to me, some were flirtatious. The mistake I made back then, because like I said, when I first started my account, I was still underage, was that I didn't check the ages for the people I was flirting back with. Because in my head, I thought, oh, if someone's flirting with me, they should be, they're probably around my age. So I just assumed that they were. Because I assumed minors should have known better. However, I should have known better and should have been more careful and aware of who I was speaking to. Is effectively arguing that this conversation is not real and that the individual involved had faked them. It is uncomfortable how common it is to come across fake allegations in an industry like this and it's why people should wait for confirmation from both sides before jumping on claims as if they're true. They should do their own inquisition to determine whether the evidence is likely to be trustworthy beforehand. That means burner accounts, low quality screenshots, strange censorship, weird visual errors and lacking context should be major red flags. Then he makes an all-encompassing statement where he acknowledges that he had spoken to several people in the past without knowing their age, further admitting that he does not have a reliable memory but is aware that when he first made his TikTok account at 17, he would have conversations with basically every fan who would message him. He goes even further than that though, admitting that some of these conversations were flirtatious in nature. Quote, I assume minors should have known better, however I should have known better and should have been more careful and aware of who I was speaking to. Yeah, you can say that again. What I'm trying to work out is whether he added this into the video, just in case the prior screenshots were real, so that he could say that he did admit to behavior like this beforehand, or if he just felt this relevant to bring up. Once again, it should go without saying, you should be aware of the age of individuals that you're flirting with online. I understand that being 17, you may not be prepared to go through all the checks and balances, but not even asking someone is another sign of a troubled handling of this platform from someone who may not deserve to have it in the first place with this kind of dangerous driver behind the wheel. This defense swerves past most of the concerning claims, but still veers right into oncoming traffic and crashes towards the end. I have had incidences where a close friend of mine turned out to have lied to me about their age when I asked one user who I was friends with for about 
five to seven months. At first told me that they were 14 when I asked for the age. Halfway through our friendship, I was baffled because we've exchanged certain messages before, which then followed up immediately afterwards. I'm telling me, actually, I'm 20, which sadly I bought it because in my head, it made sense from what the type of sexual messages they would send to me. Eventually, I hit a time where it was pretty rough in real life and me and their friendship slowly died out, which later afterwards, I come to find out that they were indeed actually 14 and lied to me for clout. Another one happened on my NSFW account where a mutual of mine who was an NSFW voice actor and was friends with other NSFW artists turned out to be underage. Due to these incidences, a little after I turned 18, which was last year during the summer, I stopped this behavior of personally interacting with people. As in, I stopped replying to DMs. Whether it was DMs supporting me or asking me questions, I stopped interacting with fans personally, even with my own mutuals which they can tell you how dry I am. I'm there for my mutuals if they really, really need someone to talk to or listen to, maybe a quick chat. But other than that, I mostly close myself off. So although I do not continue that behavior now, I still do apologize for my unprofessionalism back then. Another unknown allegation that he volunteers a confession to is in credit to several instances where his close friends had lied to him about their age. The first event was where one of his at the time friends had told him that they were 14. He had made flirtatious comments with them and was an adult at this point. Within this conversation, he could be seen saying, oh shit. I take back every flirty text I made. I deeply apologize. However, the other party would then retract the supplied age and self id as a 20 year old. He said that he bought this because it made sense in his head. But that after another year of knowing each other, they came clean that they really were 14 the entire time and had lied to him. After the first clue, he should have taken action to not immediately make the same mistake again in this conversation. He did not. That is his mistake. Whether people want to burn him on that cross is up to them. But really, it is once again further proof that he probably shouldn't be in a position to talk to potentially underage people online in the first place. The second event was where one of his NSFW voice actor mutuals had revealed to him that they were underage. I... <laughs> I'm lost for words. If these were isolated incidents, I could see a reason here, but it cannot be this common to make the same mistake of behaving inappropriately around minors. But I feel that a lot of criticism has to be levied at the kind of person who could do this. And this is a great form of evidence for why you should ID check wherever possible in your adult spaces. He said that because of these mistakes, he stopped engaging with fans wholesale and he apologized for his unprofessionalism. Starting to approach the end of this video now, he discusses the claim that he was faking his race and body type. He makes the assertion that this claim originated from an old video on his social media that people had since its deletion presumed was of him that was actually of his cousin. My identity. People have been saying that I've been faking my race, my gender, my age. People have been saying I'm too light. People are saying that I'm white. All this kind of stuff. Reason being is because this video resurfaced and people mistook it as me. This is my cousin. So quick story on how this account started. Halloween of 2022, my cousin wanted me to paper mache her a pumpkin head. So I did, and along with that, I gave her my suit, which was too tiny for me at that point. After she wore it, she made an animation for it, and she posted a picture for me in my costume. Remember, for me, not of me. After she did, I realized, wait, this could potentially become a character. And given her already having a YouTube channel and Instagram, she's already knew about social media, she is willing to help. And also given that she is quitting her YouTube channel that year because she was burning out, she was enthusiastic and pitched in on, hey, how about we start an account together? So we did. She was sort of the mascot of the account since she already wore the costume. She was the one who posted like the dancing vids and the pictures and my apron, yada yada. I was the one who posted the art and the cooking pics. And when it came to art, I was still sort of a beginner. So she'd help by drawing me pose references, which I then used to heavily reference my art, which would explain the similar art styles as you guys are claiming it to be. If you even bother to check my first video on my YouTube channel, you'd see in the description, I shout out to her channel for helping me with my animations and art. However, as the account quickly got popular, I realized that it was slowly and not only really endangering me, but mostly endangering her, especially given that she was and still is a minor. And after around or uh, during March 2023, after her full name and personal information got doxxed, 
my decision was finalized to kick her off of the account. I then deleted all videos, photos, and any content that contained her in it, which was only on my TikTok. However, sadly, recently, I am more than a year later, people have resurfaced these videos and pictures. So if you had reposted these photos containing my cousin or videos, please delete them. These are the screenshots between me and her of her confirming that it is indeed true. I know people will notice, oh, well, how come these messages are back in May and not last year when she was kicked off of the account? Well, the reason being is that this isn't the first time that people thought that we were the same person because back in May, another user doxed her full name and face thinking it was me again. So these screenshots are used as in like a witness testimony, if you will. And here's the thing, I know people are coming up with all kinds of theories right now. Oh, we got some skin tone. Oh, we got some of the hands. Oh, you got your Listen, Sherlock Holmes, sometimes stuff is just not that complicated. Sometimes it's just not that deep. She is her, I am me. Here, he provided several forms of evidence to reinforce that this was in fact his cousin and provided further context as to why he deleted this content in the first place. That being that his cousin was doxxed because of it. And so in March 2023, he removed all photos and videos of her from his account and those are the images that are now surfacing. To further back his explanation up, he provides further evidence of his actual identity, from his gender and date of birth on a Japanese passport to images and parts of his body which should by most metrics validate his identity as a black Asian male. So here's proof of my identity. Here born 2005 baby i just turned 19 this summer hint i'm a cancer sex m you want to know what m stands for male hi kore wa ore no nihon no pasoporto desu ibariki ken de umareta desu ore wa hanbun nihon jin hanbun koku jin desu ore wa ne ma san kara 4 nen mai ni amerika ni kitta desu eto mo ore wa katteru nihongo no shabiri katta ショウヘタクソ。日本語のカキカタ。ショウヘタクソ。なぜなら、アメリカ来た時、まあ、日本人けど、俺のガイカンは黒人だの。黒人みたいな人はアクセントがあって、ちょっと恥ずかしいの。
No, I am all up for holding people accountable for my actions. Yes, you are allowed to verbalize your opinion about me and my actions. However, there is a line that needs to be drawn. Holding me accountable does not initiate for you to then make fun of me or make fun of things about me on completely unrelated topics. Coming up with out of reach theories, saying I made up baby boo pumpkin situation, which then someone made a fake screenshot to add to that claim. People impersonating me to say disgusting things, doubting and making fun of me being a CSA and rape victim, to then a user making a gooner rap battle with me in it using these lyrics to make fun of my mom committing incestuous acts on me. In addition, I'd like to add that many people have brought up my hypersexuality, claiming that I use it as an excuse for my actions, given that I never brought up my hypersexuality even once when it came to allegations, because that's not how hypersexuality works. Now, have I made a post bringing awareness to hypersexuality? Yes. Have I vented about my experiences with hypersexuality? Yes. Have I answered questions to those who asked me about hypersexuality? Yes, but I have never, ever used hypersexuality as a shield or as an excuse for my wrongdoings. Never actually. As a matter of fact, I have talked about and made posts about these types of people oh God, who do use hypersexuality up, as a shield. Because as long as I can remember, the hypersexual community has faced so many toxic, harmful stereotypes. Oh, so. Do you just want to like touch people? Do you want to rape people? Hypersexuality does not make you want to commit sexual acts towards a specific person or group. Hypersexuality is a compulsive sexual disorder that comes with a uncontrollable obsession with sexual thoughts, urges, and behaviors. However, hypersexuality more so affects how you see yourself and what you do to yourself. In fact, there are many, many, many cases where hypersexuals do not like being touched. Yes, they have urges and thoughts and touch themselves, but they do not like being touched, especially by others. Given an example that there are in fact asexuals out there who have hypersexuality. Yes, they do exist. Yes, it is possible. And yes, they are just as valid. But back to the main point, you do not need to make stuff up to show that I am in the wrong. Concluding this video, I was in the wrong. It was in fact incredibly irresponsible with how I handled and interacted with my audience. I was also in fact immature and stubborn when it came to handling criticism because most of this would have been avoided if I had just listened and have been more cautious with my platform. And I do deeply apologize to those I have negatively affected and influenced. Both of my accounts, my main one and my NSFW alt account on Twitter will both be cited at 18 plus. However, be aware that on my main account, although it is cited at 18 plus, no nudity or pornography will be posted on there. That is for my NSOW alt, which is also set at 18 plus. On TikTok, the age viewing will stay 16 plus, in which I did delete my overly suggestive videos so that that account can stay 16 plus. And on TikTok especially, I will be more careful and cautious with the content I post moving forward. I know many are telling me to leave the internet and never come back, though I have taken this break to reflect on what I've done and what I could do to improve my actions moving forward and to not make the same mistake again. I will come back and I will show that I have changed. I have improved. I have learned that I can and will do better with handling my platform and me as a person. Thank you guys for your incredible patience. I also appreciate and am thankful for the people who believe in me and are willing to give me a chance to show that I can do better. Though I also understand to those who don't forgive me for my actions and criticize me for them. I completely agree. I should be held accountable and face consequences for my actions, which I have been. However, that does not mean that I'm not allowed to change and improve from it. Thank you, and I hope you guys have a good one. He posits that he will try his best to do better in the future, believes that he should be held accountable, and he wants to show everyone that he's learned. Whether the audience is willing to allow him the time to prove that's true or not is up to them. Whether he's even earned that chance is another.
Five days on from his first response, Pumpkin the Gentleman would upload a second response video to the allegations titled Clearing Out of Reach and Already Explained Allegations. This video was an opportunity for Pumpkin to cover some more of the claims about him that were shared in the past but did not feel wholly necessary to discuss within the first video. He references allegations of him faking a birthday card from a sibling where he's depicted as a black person, a comment where he called Samuel character Kurumi a baddie, one of his responses to an individual who threatened to SA him, reposting a TikTok that some called transphobic, a post that people misconstrued and him pretending to be Latino, being a degenerate in response to NSFW artwork of a popular character Freerun, reposting non-con artwork, etc. To be honest, I feel that most everything he does discuss in this video does not need to be covered here, and in comparison to the first video, I do not have much to say on these issues. I would suggest watching the video yourself if you care to hear more on these subjects, or would like that further context over me yapping about it when... Let's be honest, I'm not going to add much of substance here, I don't have much to say on them. Towards the end of this video, he posits the idea of taking a break for the foreseeable future, and I think that would be a good idea as the situation is a mess and it would give him a better opportunity to wipe the slate clean and start again. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I do appreciate the support on the channel and I would love to hear your thoughts. To sum up this video in one word, irresponsible. Subscribe to the channel, leave a like and leave a comment below so that I can get a feel for how you feel about this topic. For the first hour of this video being public, I'll respond to every comment within reason. I'll see you in the next video, which may be a retrospective, but who knows? <laughs> Not me. See you next time. Adios, my IKEA aliens. Her eyes are twined, draw four separate lines, another more to you. A tangled mess of not I confess, but the intent was there. I swear he said our sights on something that we thought was true. So now we sit and stare across a surface spanning the whole state. Two feet between and miles apart. No one's just being better. All we can see, we haven't got a clue. It falls apart. It's not hard to beat there. It falls apart. It's not. Lost tokens unknown And then I guess we slipped right through And lost all meaning on the way We ended up a tiny piece of every heart Of every part of every story of every grave It falls apart It's not hard to beat there It falls apart It's not hard to have It falls apart It's not hard There's not a heart to have